Hey guys, I'm Leon from the Lenti Group. I've been in mortgages since 2002 and going Pennsylvania, New Jersey, and the sunny state of Florida. Physically, of course, in Bucks County, PA. One of my favorite topics, and not always a favorite of all loan officers, is the spring market. Why does it get hot? Why does it heat up? One reason that a lot of people don't realize is that it actually coincides with tax season. A new tax season means more self-employed people are getting ready and, and preparing their last year's tax returns to, to go out and start shopping for homes. The competition really hits up and, and we see that with a lower inventory generally and, and of course, more activity overall. If you are self-employed, this is definitely something you, you need to know. We go by, as the lender and underwriter, we're gonna go by what you made last year, right? So we are in 2023 today. We're gonna look at your income in 2022 and we're gonna determine what house you can buy in 2023. And that's not the same for someone that's has a regular uh, employment, right? Regular job. We're gonna go by what you're making today and what your pay stub looks like. So keep in mind, it's always gonna be based on, at the very least, last year's income. So it's so important to understand how this works. Now, a lot of times with my clients, it's a three-way conversation between the client, the accountant, and very seldom, but sometimes the realtor gets involved for some reason. In any case, it's a team. We welcome it. We truly, truly do. It's so important to understand that there's some deductions that have absolutely zero impact on your debt to income ratio and, and will actually help you where there's others that will decrease your income and, and that's fine if, if they're legitimate of course but at the same time it doesn't necessarily help you when you're buying a home it's usually about finding the proper balance because some expenses believe it or not can be carried over to the next year some not that's why it's a team effort so if you're self-employed i encourage you to talk to a loan officer prior to shopping for home prior to getting pre-approved prior to filing your taxes it just as a, a few pointers those of you that have your own businesses and own equipment one major expense is known as depreciation right you can depreciate your equipment you can actually depreciate lots of things like even even real estate a lot of people don't know depreciation gets added back as income so even though, even though you're taking it as a tax break as a tax deduction it gets added back to your income come underwriting time so super important to understand how that works and how it impacts your dti it's actually a positive it's it's a good thing for sure there's lots of other expenses that may not always be a positive like meals and entertainment and a whole slew of others so it really is something that's ever evolving the, the the tax breaks are ever evolving the underwriting code is always evolving so definitely speak to someone that knows what they're talking about when it comes to self-employed income qualification a few other pointers that, that i could give you guys is that your tax liability a lot of times people don't realize that your tax bill can, can be financed through the IRS. So if you're filing taxes this year and you're prepping all your funds to buy a house, whether it's down payment, closing costs, furniture, repairs, no matter what the expense is, the IRS expense can be financed, it, it, to my knowledge, up to nine years. Again, guys, keep in mind, I'm not an accountant. I'm just telling you what I see come across my desk and that this is information I've gathered from other tax preparers and CPAs. But definitely your tax liability at least on the federal side, can for sure be financed through the IRS with an installment agreement, which helps, right? If you're buying a house, this really helps. It's just one less thing to worry about. Another thing to watch out for are things like capital gains. They may or may not be used as income if you buy and sell things. However it is that you received your capital gains on your tax returns, they may not necessarily be allowed when it comes to uh, getting approved for a mortgage. So these are just some of the few like red flags, if you want to call them that, or and or just things to know about when you're filing uh, so that this way you don't uh, file and then figure out that the, you, God forbid, can't afford or can't get approved for the house that you want. If you want to know more about how this works. If you if you need more advice, please feel free to reach out here at the Find My Way Home Network or on my website, applywithleon.com. If you decide not to work with me, no big deal, but I just want to help you, right? I just want to make sure that you buy a home this year because once your taxes are filed and the number doesn't match what you thought it did, you may or may not be able to buy a home this year. So it's that important. If you want to know more about how this works, feel free to reach out here at the Find My Way Home Network or applywithleon.com.